Have you ever wondered if your loved one sleeping next to you is actually who you think it is? Have you ever been sent a strange video that completely unnerved you? Have you ever gotten a brain tumor as a child, got it removed, lost the ability to perceive yourself, and then underwent a traumatic dream that made you appreciate the things you have in life more? Well, tonight, we're going to dive into each of these scenarios and judge how scary they are. Good evening. I'm Michael Kranker, and welcome to Hunting for Horror. First off, I'd like to thank Cowberry, who requested that I cover multiple videos in a single episode so that it could be longer. So you can all thank them for this and every future episode from now on, featuring three videos instead of just one. And with that, let's get into the first video, which I recommend you watch before continuing this episode, and that goes for the other two as well. Our first topic of the night was submitted by Joan Chilling, or Joanne Chilling, I'm not quite sure which one it is. Please correct me in the, uh, in the comments. And it's called Bedfellows. The video was uploaded 15 years ago to the channel... Can you guys get easier names? Jesus fucking Christ. Fudio.com, I think. It's 2 minutes and 46 seconds long and currently sits at 3.6 million views. The video begins by reminding us what we're watching and who made it, and sets up a bedroom scene. No, not like that. It appears to be two people sleeping in a bed. At least, I think that's what it is. Not only is this video 480p, it's not even full screen. We get a short montage of some photos that let us know that this is indeed a couple sleeping in this bed, set to the sounds of crickets and a clock ticking. This is already a great setup. The atmosphere is nice and calm, which sets up a sense of security with the audience. And it's simple enough that it grounds everything in reality really nicely. One half of our couple gets a phone call waking her up. She turns around to ask her spouse to hand her a phone, but... Danny, can you hand me my phone? Danny, oh, I swear to God. Danny seems strangely unresponsive. Huh, <laughs> guess he's just a heavy sleeper. Realizing she's not going to wake him up, she reaches over Danny to grab her phone. Wow, she's getting really close to him. Good thing this is definitely her loving partner and, uh, I don't know, a demon or something? She picks up the phone and it's some guy Hello? on the phone. Oof, better not let Danny hear. He might get the wrong idea. Oh wait, that that is Danny. But if that's Danny, then who's? Well, he looks happy and cozy. Hey, what are you doing? What are you doing? You just found out this is not your significant other. It is time to skedaddle. <laughs> oh, perfect. You see what you did? Now you jump scared my audience. The video overall is really well done. We got a nice setup, the reveal that the person next to her is not who she thinks it is is played out really nicely, dropping it on the viewer and letting the horror of how close she was just to this thing sink in with the audience. And that right there is the proper use of a jump scare, which by the way I have a video about right here. Her reaching over to find out what is exactly in the bed with her is generally suspenseful, and it keeps the audience engaged and guessing on what happens next. Now, normally I would call a jump scare like this cheap, but it genuinely got me. I did not expect the jump scare to come right out the audience like that. It breaks the fourth wall a little bit, but it was effective, so I'll give it a pass. And I'll place Bedfellows in B tier. Our next video is actually one from my childhood. I remember it freaking me out a bit as a kid, but how does it hold up now? Let's find out with the illusion of bias. The Illusion of Bias was uploaded 14 years ago to the channel Mind Sea Base. It's 5 minutes and 27 seconds long and currently sits at 533,000 views. The video begins by questioning the viewer. Well, I mean, I have a whole series where my goal is to piss off spirits enough that I'm able to document a paranormal encounter, so. so session. Maybe you didn't piss the ghost off enough? Maybe not. Hey, fuckhead! Move the damn thing! Yeah, I guess you could say that. No, I think I'm okay with being a decent person, although I do like doing this to people.
Well, yeah, well, this one time I ate a microwave meal when I was at work, and then it gave me food poisoning. I came home, I had the shits, I was throwing up. I the video then goes on into this really uncomfortable description on what it's like to throw up. Asking you if you remember the feeling of saliva gathering up in your mouth, the contractions in your stomach, and the feeling of your stomach bile flowing out of your throat. And it's all set to these semi-animated scenes and some honestly fantastically disgusting sound design. While I'm not a huge fan on the over-reliance of text, some of which goes by a little too quickly to read. But so far, this is doing a great job setting up the atmosphere. The questions are designed to make you consider your darker, more selfish desires and make you remember a somewhat traumatic experience in which you got sick, which I'm pretty sure everyone has had happen to them at least once in their life. Throwing up is not fun, and this video plays on bringing up that memory of it to make you feel uneasy, and maybe a little even nauseous as you watch on. But this whole setup is actually to introduce our main character of this video, and it's explained that she has to deal with throwing up every single night, which is super rough, actually. And it's also pretty impactful after we were just reminded of what it's like to throw up. The captions tell us that she had a brain tumor as a child, which she got removed. In fact, it is accompanied by some more uncomfortable sound design. <laughs> Doctors were able to remove the tumor, however, at a cost. Oh, shit. Hey! Hey, Slenderman! I found your daughter! Gotta be more careful with that, man. Pay your child support, buddy. The girl's inability to see her face caused her depression and gave her a longing to be able to see her face. And then one night, she had a dream that she was in a field walking down a path that led to a geyser. The ground began to rumble and shake until... And then the girl fell down the geyser? I think that's what's happening anyway. Either that, or she's pulling a curly from the Three Stooges. Everything is going to find its place. Oh, Jesus! Just relax and go with the flow. This audible narrator comes out of nowhere and tells us to relax and just go with the flow. <laughs> Sir, I am anything but relaxed right now. Having this voice come in when the entire video has been nothing but sounds and captions is super jarring, and it does a good job of catching the viewer off guard. I'd say this even kind of gives you a soft jump scare in itself. The captions chime back in and let us know that the girl feels super light and euphoric. That is, until Gargles Nails McGee speaks up again and tells the girl this. But this information doesn't have the effect on the girl that you might think it would. She wakes up from her dream feeling sick, and we switch to this really unnerving background music. She no longer feels happy. She feels like something is wrong. That something is in the room with her. Watching her. She rushes to the bathroom, excited to see if she can finally see her face again. However, what she sees in the mirror is not quite what she expected. But, I mean, come on, how bad can it be, right? Uh, you mean you could use a little help? Uh, maybe some moisturizer, a, a nice mud mask, um, some... Reconstructive surgery... Uh, look, it really doesn't matter what I think. What do you think about it? Yeah... Yeah... That's fair. It's, uh... It's pretty bad. But luckily, that's not actually the girl's face. Because shortly after, she wakes up. It was all a dream, thank God. However, from that night on, she wakes up every morning in a pool of her own vomit. The video ends by asking the viewer if they appreciate what they have, as what happened to this girl could happen to anyone, even to you. A little hand-fisted if you ask me, and I feel like wanting to see her face again after losing the ability to perceive it isn't really all that selfish. But I'm not here to judge morals, I'm here to tell you if the video was scary or not. And 
yeah, I'd say so. It does a good job at getting the viewer to feel what our protagonist feels, and it's grounded enough in reality that, yeah, I would believe this could happen to me. I think the visuals add a lot too. They remind me of the jankier animation from old Flash games like uh, The House and Ex Mortis. Really sets the mood of, hey, something isn't right here. However, I think what really sells this video is the goopy, fleshy sounds that make you feel uneasy. And that grudge girl sounding noise that happens when we get a look at the girl's face. Yeah, that was well done. I think I'll put that in A tier. Our last video of the evening is another submission. This time from... Fuck, man. Air... Air Wasilian. Air Wasilian. I hope I pronounced that right. If I didn't, again, correct me in the uh, in the comments, please. And the video was called "A Mysterious Video Sent to Us Through WeTransfer." Paranormal. It was uploaded six years ago to the Horror Glore channel. It is one minute and nineteen seconds long and currently sits at seven point nine thousand views. The video begins by explaining through text that the video we're about to watch is of an unknown location and was sent in to them via email. However, they can't disclose the sending email address. Why not? Did the email come with an NDA or something? The actual video opens up with some walking up to what looks like a decrepit, old, and abandoned building. The camera person walks up the stairs and begins to film the inside of a room through an open doorway, where he finds this. Did you see it? No, r really, did you see it? I, I, I couldn't quite make it out. It looks like someone sits up from lying down on a bed of some sort, accompanied by the sound of an asthmatic person reaching for their inhaler. The camera person then runs away, then the video ends. Uh, was it scary? No, not really. There was a good setup with the added mystery surrounding the video itself, but... Not much actually happens. Person walks up to an abandoned building. Homeless person walks up, remembers they're homeless. Person leaves. I can see how that might freak you out if you were the one filming, but watching it secondhand? E tier. But that was all the videos for this evening. Thank you to everyone who submitted a video. If you have a scary video you'd like me to talk about, leave it in a comment or in our new Discord, link in the description. And as always, this is just what I think. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And thank you for watching.